Hey guys, welcome to this episode I've called Flossing Your Arch Top. Flossing Your Arch Top. Does that seem odd to you? Does that seem weird to you? Well, it shouldn't, considering this is my channel. Now, you always learn profound things and new techniques here, so I'm going to tell you a little secret about dental floss. Most people think that dental floss, how you, how you like the way I'm creating this 3D effect, holding this up and moving it around, you're not going to smoke cigarettes anymore. Anyway, so, where were we? Yeah, dental floss. People think, because of the misleading name of the product, that it is for your teeth. No, it's not. It is for a highly evolved, little known technique on arch tops that the greatest luthiers, good luthiers, intermediate luthiers, okay, complete amateurs who aren't even luthiers like me use. Um, you'll notice that I have my dent, uh, surgical procedure with scalpel shirt on and I have my surgical hat. I'm going to be masking up. Um, yeah, I think I'll, I'll put this on something like this. There we go. All right. Believe me, I'm ready. I am a professional surgeon. Anyway, our patient is going to be the Texas junk pile. And what we are going to do is we are going to reverse. Don't worry, guys. We're not going there. We're going to reverse something that was done to the piezo that is underneath here that was disconnected. I don't like that. But now this back in my hands, I can do corrective surgery. Let's talk a little bit about exactly what's going on here. Oh, we're on. Okay, notice that I've been into wardrobe to put on my... Bob Log the Third shirt. Do you know who Bob Log the Third is? You don't? What's wrong with you? I'm going to give you a link up there. You, you got to know who Bob Log the Third is. Anyway, this procedure we're going to perform is called the Bob Log the Third procedure. Okay, this is a cigar box guitar that I built for Bob Log the Third. There's actually two of them out there. Bob has one, I have one. This one is signed by Bob, and this is one that you will want to covet. Um, you know what? I think that you need to see a link to Bob playing one of these guitars, maybe even this one right up there right about now. But what does this have to do with anything? You'll see that there are two input jacks on this guitar too. And if you zoom in, when Bob is playing one of his junky silver tone arch tops in one of those video links I'm giving you up there if you zoom in where uh, the input jacks are you're going to see two and the reason for that is one is connected to whatever coil pickup he's got running and then the other one is connected to a piezo that's usually situated right under the bridge like this one made out of swamp cooler parts and tubing. You see that? Grounding clamps, swamp cooler tubing, that's a must. Anyway, so Bob described to me where his playing style came from. He heard a song by Mississippi Fred McDowell called Bulldog Blues link to it right up there right about now. now I want you to listen towards the end of the song Bob describes that he had never heard anybody making the sounds that you're hearing with the person running their slide up and down the side of the fingerboard it almost sounded like a horse galloping or something so if you've got a coil going on and you're running through amps you can't really get that sound you get what's coming off the strings but if you've got a piezo and you've got a separate input jack, you catch all of that. You catch every tap on the box. You catch every noise. And it gives you uh, some kind of, a, a, I don't know, some old bluesy, like, buck of white beating on his guitar. Anyway, that's the reason behind it. Now, there's been a lot of people saying, why don't you use three-way switches? Why don't you use this? Why don't you use that? You know what? 
the reason I do this is because you can hook up wireless inputs to these two um, and send the signal wirelessly to a couple amps you have. The receivers are plugged in over there like a cable, like the cable would. And at the end, you might have some junky, trashy old tube amp and then something else. But the bottom line is the tapping and all this ends up showing up on its own. You have two volume controls, you don't need tone, and you can do any number of effects while the guitar is going on as long as you've got your amps and your pedals hooked up properly. So that's the idea. Now, this guitar, the Texas Junk Pile, was rigged up that way when it came out of my shop originally. You can see that there is an input jack there and a hole there where there was another input jack. So I lent this guitar out. It had two volume controls set up just like I just showed you with that cigar box. And somebody decided, well, you know what? I need a tone control and all that. So I'm going to disconnect the piezo, which was hid under the Texas license plate, which actually come in Wheaties uh, in 1953 in a box of Wheaties. So we're going to pull this thing apart. We're going to show you how to hook it back up. And we're going to talk about how dental floss is critical in this surgical procedure. Let's go to the bench. Okay, guys, let's start here. The way this was originally wired up was you had a volume control for the coil pickup down here, silver foil. Uh, and then you had a volume control for a piezo that was underneath the Texas license plate. They, everything functioned independently of each other and the idea was you would run these to two separate um, amps, whether it be by conventional cable or wireless uh, configuration. Anyway, so if you look here and here, where the extra holes were on this, to start off life as a Gibson ES-175 knockoff, um, it has fooled a lot of people until they turn around. It's something they see in the binding on the back and the shape of the body says, oh, you're right. But other than that, it's a very clever uh, thing. You can see we did some um, repairs to it here and there. There were some cracks and things. Um, if you want to see the playlist on how this come together or the video that explains what we did in general, the uh, iCard is right up there right about now. Anyway somebody decided that they wanted instead of putting in another control uh, and configuring this where it had another control what they did was they just cut the wires on this one so let's pop this off of here and see what happened isn't that the nicest chick flick teal screw you ever saw seen saw look you always want to have magnets around. Believe me, always have magnets. Uh, that way you find the screws. If you get really weird about things like I tend to be, you can put your magnets the way they appeared to be. You see that? And then the third one would obviously go in the last one. But we get this off because, again, if you're going to use power tools, keep that clutch set really low you don't want to strip this stuff out look at that isn't that pretty just like it went and then we pulled this out and voila somebody didn't even give me much room to splice these wires now i want you to notice i have the bean bag and the neck cradle there and we're going to set this here we don't want this dropping off here but i think you can see that i built a surround out of metal around each of these where the pickup goes because in the case of the of the pickup the coil you had four uh, screws going into the top of the guitar that would hold this in place I don't really like that I think screws strip out after a while so I took some thin metal and aged it and then put six screws into that and then the four screws on the coil would have to go through the metal and sink in then into the wooden it's my observation that metal holds threads better now we'll take um, this off and again 
again, I'm going to know where my magnet is. There we go. And when I pull this off, you're going to see the glue on the piezo came off. But this is kind of what I was left with. I got a real big piezo here, um, and it was stuck to the back of the here you can see it so I'm just going to use a new piezo and wire this all up and then we will wire everything up so you're asking yourself where does the dental floss come into this you made a big hubbub about the dental floss well we are going to have to put another potentiometer right here and feed it through everywhere and that's where the dental floss will come in so I'm gonna to have to drill this out I used hide glue on these things so I can take a heat gun and actually drill a bit into this just a little bit and then heat it up of course I don't want to ruin this magnificent finish but that hide glue will cut loose that's part of the reason I used hide glue instead of tight bond or something else you want to remember Hide glue is heat activated. That's why they use it on necks. That's how you can steam necks. Anyway, let's get that one drilled out. All right, there we go. That hole is opened up. All the wood broke loose. I'm going to have to vacuum the stuff out of there. I got a cool vacuum. I'll show you if I can remember. So now I got to play the twist and shout game and try to do this up and through here. I don't like using those little tiny potentiometers. I like using these. So how am I going to fish this in here? Okay, so we're going to take a piece of coat hanger. Now you've seen me use this before because you can reach in and hook a uh, push back wire and just pull it up through something like this like that um, but these wires are also they attach themselves to a magnet and in fact you can open this up a little bit and you can actually squeeze it and form it to the magnet if necessary so it doesn't drop off but you can basically do this and then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to get a little piece of uh, or not a piece but a nut and we want to test it to make sure that it will actually stick to the magnet okay now the very profound part which will be disappointing to you totally once you see it because it's really nothing magnificent you're going to take and put some dental floss through there like so I wouldn't draw it all the way up to tighten it up because well you're going to have to cut it off and if it's tight that'll be pretty hard to do but you just do that like so okay and then we're going to take enough dental floss like so pull it out and we're going to drop that nut make sure the nut will fit in the hole and then we're just going to sit our dental floss like that I'm going to take my hooked wire I'm going to put my magnet on it and I'm going to go down through the hole in the body for the pickup and what do you know? There we go. There's the end of our dental floss. You with me? And we'll pull a lot of slack here. And I'm going to tie this off around something so it doesn't move around on me. Now you want to remember that you we're going to be taking this potentiometer in through here. Um, I'm actually going to wire this up.
first thing I want to do is remember which hole am I going into? I'm going through this one. Next, do I need anything on the bottom of the shaft of the potentiometer? Yeah, I'm going to put two washers on there. That gets everything up off the body of the guitar. You want to remember that these bodies are slightly curved, even in an area like that. So this will take up some slack if this needs to move a little bit to sit in an area that's not perfectly flat. So I've put those on there. Now what I'm going to do is... This piece of wire is going to help me out immensely because it's curved. I can reach in like this and pull it up through this. Now I'm going to show you a little oil field trick. I'm going to, this is good for tying onto several 55 gallon drums at once with a chain. You see what I'm doing here? I'm making a loop like this. I'm coming back over the top like this. I'm going to double noose. See that groove in the potentiometer? I'm going to put that there. I'm going to put both of those loops through there. And then I'm going to make sure it's seated right there. And I'm going to work it up tight. Now see, this over here is trying to move back around on me. If I don't pay attention, it'll fall through. But anyway, now I'm going to just drop this down into here. Make sure it doesn't wind around anything. And then I'm going to take this part here. And I'm going to get this positioned right under the hole there where it pulls up. Okay, we have the potentiometer pulled into place there, ready to uh, put the nut and washers on. But I'm going to call to your attention the importance of thinking things out before and not after. Because we're at one of these places where had I not thought this out, there would be a problem. You know that we have a nut on the end of our dental floss. Again, I think you've figured out by now dental floss is extremely durable. It has high tensile strength. So you'll notice that I put the washers and the nut on before I got to this spot because now I can just simply pull this into place and everything fits right there. Of course, as I tighten this up, Again, I'm going to use this fancy wrench, but if I hadn't put the nuts and the washer on here, then I would be fiddling around. It would drop down. We'd start over. One thing I do need you to pay attention to here is you want to make sure that your connections at the bottom of the pot are turned the right way so I can just use this like this. The next thing you want to pay attention to is where is off or the lowest setting on your pot. Turn that to where you want it, maybe facing at you. So when you put your knob on, the zero will be facing at you. And then you'll be able to put a finger or something in here and use this to tighten this up. Next thing we're going to do is put the piezo on. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is we want to make sure that all the holes on this thing line up because it's been on the guitar before. Better to do this before than after when your holes don't line up and you're making mistakes. So we know it goes there. The piezo is going to flip over and sit like so. We want to make sure that it's free to bend. And we have shrink wrapped this so it's durable. I've got these little clamps here. We're just going to clamp a couple of the edges here and then we're going to take our fancy rag here that's meant just for this and we're going to take a little bit of our five minute epoxy and we're just going to go along the edge like this and smooth it out right at the edge like so and then we're going to move the tape here and there as we need to the whole idea here is we're still going to use hot glue to cover this and make it durable but these edges are going to be put down with a product that's virtually indestructible that has a longer shelf life than the stuff they dump in the desert from the nuclear power plants in Nevada. All right, there we go. 
Um, we need to let this sit until it cures. Um, how long does it take? By name, five minute quick setting epoxy to set. Well, after some very careful research and investigation, I've discovered about five minutes. I'll see you then. Of the story is when you're working on these old arch tops, especially ones that don't have a lot of holes cut in them, if you don't want to take pickups apart and all that kind of thing, you always want to make sure that you've seen me use your brain and sometimes start at the end to figure out where the beginning is and walk your way back through it. You're seeing me using um, uh, coat hangers and magnets and, and dental floss and even. 10 strings, number 10 strings. Don't forget about that episode I did called 10 string crack hack. It's up there right about now where we made a little tool and use a 10 string to pull up pieces of splints on uh, axial cracks running with the body of the guitar. Anyway, bottom line, in all seriousness, use your head. You've seen that this dental floss, unlike wire, if you tie a little nut on it that's magnetic and then take something that has a magnet on it you can just reach in there and boom catch a hold of it and pop things in one of the most difficult things to do around an f hole is to reach your finger up in there and um drop uh the, or pull the top of the potentiometer up through and then not have it spin around so uh, this is a good way to do it so hey thanks for watching uh give me a like down below I like to share my secrets with you and it'll make what you're trying to do much easier so see you next time oh don't forget if you don't know who Bob Log is I'm gonna show you down below you need to start buying his stuff um, yeah do not covet his figure skaters outfit that's for sure get your own